So, I've got some more boss mods covered today as part of the modded boss pack made by Warperson. Big shout out to him for making it. This video is a continuation of the first one where I covered the Demon Prince. Go check out that one if you haven't. And this one, today, we're going to be covering a couple more of them. So, starting off, let me just show you the first one. This is the Queen of Jaws. You can see, it moves very fast and we'll explain more of it in a second. We also have another boss here called the Flame of Terror, and once again, I'll explain more of it in a brief moment. The cool thing about this mod too is that you can actually choose uh, when you want each boss to spawn. So uh, for this game, you'll see that, well, the first boss we have is the Queen of Jaws, but I've actually made it so it's going to be alternating. So we're going to be doing Queen of Jaws, Flame of Terror, Queen, Terror, and then Queen for the five tiers of this one. So it should be a fun time. Now let's go into the details of the Queen of Jaws first. So as you can see, she has no immunity, but she's very fast. In fact, so fast that her special skull effect is that she goes even faster. And there's another timer effect over here where every six seconds, she selects the tower and if it's a mechanical tower, removes five lives. But if the tower is otherwise, it will sell the tower for cheaper cost and remove double the amount of lives. And what is a mechanical tower, you ask? Well, it's basically any of these that are shown in the description over here, so... I guess the strategy for this boss would be to get as many of these towers as possible so that you lower your chance of uh, it selling one of your bad towers, because losing five lives is obviously way better than whatever you get if it's not mechanical. Important to note that it's not the specific tier of these towers, like you can, it's the minimum of that tower. So for example, since attack is 000, that means any tower shooter will be counted as mechanical, which is good. Because, uh, well, attacks are pretty good against bosses. It's thing called attack zone, I heard it is fairly good good choice that being said seems like the biggest problem with this boss is going to be its speed but luckily it's got reduced hp to compensate and in fact if we take a look at the uh chart here it actually kind of looks like it doesn't have enough hp because am i reading that right tier 5 has 22.5k hp doesn't a paragon just like one shot that instantly i know the speed is really fast but like really maybe the fact that it has multiple skulls means uh the skull fact where it speeds for, for a, sh a short amount of time like it makes it Super fast. I guess we'll find out for certain, but the make that HP seems really low. Anyways, just like every boss on the planet, the early game is fairly trivial. I actually probably shouldn't have gone for a boomerang. I thought it'd be decent. 202 is always is a pretty good choice, I would say, for cheap early game, but I feel like on this map, since it gets hit by the wall above it, kinda doesn't get as much damage as I would really like it to be. So you know what? I'll even sell it for a, a Druid of the Jungle. That's probably a little better of a choice on a single, a single lane map like this. Frankly, it would have been a smarter choice for me to have gone Balloon Trap, but I forgot, so... This will probably do for now, so let's uh, turn off Auto Start coming into round 40. Just to see what uh, what options I got. I guess I don't want to try Tax Zone right away, because that sounds pretty boring. So how about we'll try a Sticky Bomb. This is not mechanical, so this is a chance of being sold. But luckily, these farms count as mechanical, because they're at least 333. I think what actually is the play here, though, is just spam the the weakest mechanical tower, so that there's a higher chance of it picking this one, since it's, you know, completely random. So if it does end up selling our Sticky Bomb, for example, we'll just chalk it up to being very unlucky. And now let's play, and let's see if Sticky Bomb's enough, because it only needs, like, 10 Stickies on it to kill. I think it's too fast, actually, so... Yeah, it's not even... Tar is, is, it, is it even targeting? It is, but very slowly, okay. I figured that wouldn't work. So we'll try again. Once again, just like the Demon Prince, I feel like the easiest or the hardest here is going to be the first ones. Also, why can't I just do this? Mob Eliminator. Doesn't it do 4 and 5k damage and the HP of this is like below that? So in theory, one shots. Although maybe the Skulls might have a different thing to say about it. So let's see. Use it now. Ah, uh, yes. It only goes halfway. Well, this would work if I just simply uh, restarted or... Put it in a better spot, because that almost does... Wait, no, I just killed right here. Okay. Well, that was easy. Uh, can we kill the insides, though? Let me just make sure. Come on. Uh, we'll even sell the E-Limb just to get the beer up early, quickly. There we go. Uh, well, that was easier than I thought. So, uh, now, coming to Tier 2, I should explain what uh, the Flame of Terror does. So, let's go ahead and take a read. So, it's immune to Magic Tower, so... Purple... Although, actually, magic versus purple immunity is a little bit different, because, you know, Dread Balloon has a magic immunity. But purple immunity, not every magic tower is immune to purple. 
So not sure what that means, but let's take a look at the skull effect. It removes 40% of your current cash amount. So I guess it's important to not have any cash on hand when it's in. On top of that, its timer effect looks like it's kind of like Loon Aries, although on a timer. It spawns uh, 60 times this ceramic every 30 seconds. So to me, it sounds pretty manageable because we can simply just get a tower that I guess can defend all those constant or that chunk of ceramics as well as the boss doing good boss damage itself. I would say Avatar of Wrath, but that is a magic tower, so we might need to think uh, differently. Maybe something like the Sky Shredder, I don't know. Obviously, a Mad would also work, but I think people would enjoy it more if I went for some things uh, a little bit outside of the box. Granted, I know Sky Shredder isn't too out of the box, but you know what I mean. Let's just go for Deep Breath. Always solid mid game. And just work on the farming as per usual. Also, if you want a reference of the HP amounts of this boss, then it's looking like it's 150k for a tier 2. So that's about half the uh, amount of HP as a tier 2 Elite Blunarius. Speed seems pretty normal, and there's only two skulls. It's kind of interesting how in this mod, the skulls seem to uh, increase with tiers, but... Well, you know how in normal bosses, that's not the case. It just uh, has the same amount for it, the entire game mode. But I guess that's a nice way of having an all-encompassing uh, difficulty, because there's no medium versus, or normal versus elite for these mod bosses here. Now, I think I'm going to stop farming and uh, start saving up. Okay, so I did say I want to do something outside of the norm, so... Uh, but before that, I do want to just see if Avatar Breath actually did damage, because I want to see if it's purple or just magic immunity. So, okay, it's just purple immunity, so Avatar Wrath would work. But let's try something else. Okay, this is probably not too crazy terror, but honestly, Super Monkeys sound pretty fine. And I'm thinking Sun Avatar. You might be thinking, wait, does that not pop purple? But there's a knowledge that makes it allow, allow the Sun Avatar to pop purple, so... Uh, I feel like maybe just two, three, two, zero. So I get camo somewhere at some point. And of course, I am going to give a uh, plus damage buff. Would it be cripple or rather uh, super brittle? Yeah, I think so. I was kind of thinking cripple mob just so it has full map range. But I feel like if we just kill it in this one loop, uh, we'll be good. Let me just go ahead and play. And I'll give a camo real quick like this. And yeah, let's just watch the damage on those sound avatars. Obviously, not great at the moment, but it will get better. Trust me. Okay, not gonna lie though, this boss moves pretty fast, so I think we actually have to sell some towers. I'll sell two of these right now, but I'm pretty sure I'm gonna need a little bit more. And here come the ceramics. Again, it should be about 60 of them, although if uh, the math dot floor doesn't work properly, then that would make it 90 ceramics. Again, not a big deal, because after I was having a pierce. But yeah, this damage is pretty bad, as I expected. So I'm still gonna try to see if we can kill it with super brittle spam. Or Sun after our spam, so I'm gonna go ahead and get another one. In fact, I should honestly just spam 0 0 supers, because these don't have purple immunity, and they do great damage when paired with Brit. Also, I'm pretty sure the Surrounds Mark gets money, so honestly, leaving the boss alive for a little longer is uh, actually uh, my big brain play, just to uh, farm a little bit harder, you know? And let's just make sure I can actually pop this. Maybe I'll just do a couple Grape Shots, just to speed up the process, because they do, like, pretty solid damage. 60 damage per shot. Not bad. Actually, crap. Uh, Super Brittle's out of range. Quickly, quickly. I'm gonna, I'm gonna die here, aren't I? Okay. Well, we'll just go ahead and restart this round real quick. Okay. Just a couple more optimizations for this run. So we'll go for a range Brittle because I think that's probably a little bit better than having it shoot faster. But yeah, I think we need the range that time. And I guess I'll go ahead and sell one more Central Market just for another. Actually, two more for this. We'll need to sell them anyways. Also, crap, they don't see over the wall. I forgot. You're supposed to actually go for Ultra Vision because there's a new knowledge that makes it suit you as you see over here. And now, upgrade this guy to Sun Avatar and have it start doing a massive amount of damage. Well, so far, you can definitely see a huge difference. Popping down a lot faster, although I will need to get a new one. I'll sell uh, this for this. A lot of selling involved, I know. But it'll be okay. Once again, we'll just get a couple of destroyers just to be extra safe uh, that we got this. Three of them. Okay, how about four? And we should have enough this time, right? Yep. Off meta gaming has beaten tier two. So let me just see if I can actually afford what I need right now. Sal, sal, sal. Ooh, my uh, favorite shirt is a bit out of range of some of these towers here, but that's okay. I think we'll just barely have enough for the uh, banana central. All right, cool. Right on time. And I guess we'll just keep one sound avatar because it works for now. Also, I should know, I barely even noticed the uh, skull effect for the Flame of Tear there, because I guess we uh, 
didn't have a lot of money on hand, so that losing 40%, like, it's very easy to get around that. Now, going back to the Queen of Jaws for Tier 3 here, again, Tier 3 only has 13.5k HP, so, uh, yeah. Again, 3 Elim abilities and or 3 First Strikes, anything like that, we can one-shot it. In fact, I think it would be fun to do that. Like, do we really need to farm that hard for Tier 3? Well, let's find out. So the moment spawns in, let's see, let's just see how quickly we can insta-kill it now. Oh wait, crap, there's four skulls, so, uh, I lied. Need to do a little bit more damage, that's quite, that's, that's fine. I can just do Elim, and, uh, bye bye Also, did it sell any of our towers in the six seconds? I don't remember, or I can't recall. Maybe it lost five of our lives, but again, I wasn't paying attention, but, yeah. Just like that, uh, Queen of Jaws is gone. So I feel like, well, I guess I did alternate it with the, uh, Jaws being Tier 5. Uh, I feel like Tier 5 is just gonna be, uh, quite the breeze. But for Flame Tier, I don't think it'll be quite the breeze uh, compared to the Queen of Jaws, but the HP is still pretty low. Only 800k. It's pretty similar to, like, a Tier 4 normal balloon air or something like that. So yeah, I kind of feel like a Paragon is all we're going to need for uh, Tier 4 there. I feel like uh, it'd be very balanced, the Queen of Jaws, if it just simply had more HP. And maybe if, like, the Timer and Skull Effect swap, because, like, uh, yeah, if the Queen just exits in less than 6 seconds, then... You barely have that effect, and yeah, pretty much haven't noticed it all game. If that means anything. So here we go, let's just blast off with the Apex Blast Master, just so I also don't tie to these, uh, FDTs here. Again, kind of scary really far, and here we go. 720k HP, how long will it take? Also, I just realized that I left, uh, $579,000 on the table, but you know what? We'll give, uh, some, the tier a bit of money, just for ensuring, you know... Uh, an easy kill. Actually, it might not be an easy kill as I expected, because I'm moving pretty fast. Surely a Paragon's enough, right? I did know- yeah, I'm down to 190k now, okay. Yeah. That's like $400,000 gone from nowhere. But again, that's okay, since Tier 5 is going to be uh, uh, pretty easy regardless. But I'm actually surprised that, like, a degree 32 is taking this long. I know it's not getting good bounces, because I think it's best if the boss is literally next- right next to the wall. Then you'll be getting all the secondary bounces. Hopefully it's enough to, like, clip the exit, though. I really don't want to drop another tower. Alright, down to 4,000 HP. Fine. I'll kill it with one Elim ability. I like how perfect that was. The HP was left just to that right amount. And we get a Mole Baller as an Insta-2. Very cool. So the speed of the Jaws is faster compared to what it was on Tier 3 and Tier 1. But is it so much faster that a Dark Paragon can't do 22,000 damage to it? Because, again... That's all the HP it has. If it does take longer than 6 seconds to kill it, there actually is a small chance that it'll sell the Dark Paragon, because I don't think this is counted as mechanical, although it certainly it kind of passes mechanical. I think only the 4XX start and above is considered mechanical, although I guess since uh, Dark Paragon encompasses all those, I think it... Actually, it, it, might, it might count. It might be immune from the selling. I guess we'll see. Highly likely I'll sell the Dark Baron, even if it was considered a uh, non-mechanical. Now, let me just also carefully watch the lives, if it, again, lasts long enough to see if it actually did take away anything. Oh, also, crap. No, no, we killed it, we killed it. Remember that the Skull makes it uh, speed up for a short amount of time? I thought it was gonna, like, exit in those five Skulls, but, yeah. That was, uh, pretty fast. Like, both in how fast that jaw went and how quickly we killed it, so, uh, yeah. That's, uh, two bosses in one. Both pretty simple concepts, so I think I probably could have covered uh, the other uh, boss remaining in this one, but I'll save that for another time, so uh, I guess stay tuned for the last two in this mod pack, and uh, yeah, subscribe for more. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.